Asus is a well-known brand in the gaming world and it is of no surprise that they came out with a gaming chair. The ROG Chariot X Core is one of the latest racing car styles gaming chair that we will be talking today. The chair comes in three different color variants and they all look really good. Right off the bat, I was very impressed with the comfort level of this chair. This reminds me of another gaming chair brand called Apol, which is, by the way, a Singaporean brand. Check them out too if you are on the lookout for a new gaming chair. And back to the ROG Chariot X Core. This is considered as a big frame chair for human beings who are as big as me. I am 1.85 meters tall and I fit perfectly on this chair. Build-wise, I have no doubt that this can last a very long time. The entire frame looks and feels very sturdy, even when a heavy set person like myself, weighing 93 kilograms, were to sit on it. I hear no audible creaking, and most of the frame is metallic, except for some parts which are, surprise surprise, plastic. The plastic ones act more as a cover than the actual frame. The chair also comes with padded foams to make your comfort level even higher. These are plushy ones which is at the back to support your lumbar as well as at the headrest to cradle your neck and your head. Let's head over to explore the mechanism which I discovered there are a few hits and misses. The handrest comes in 4D which at this point has become a norm. You can raise and lower it, you can shift it inwards and outwards you can swivel the handrest to be a V-shape or an inverted V-shape to help you with ergonomics, depending on how high or how low your desk is. You can also move the handrest away from you or towards you. This depends on how far you want to reach your, say, keyboard or your mouse, all dependent on where the position of those devices are at your desk, of course. The part that I think isn't designed well is the tilting lever as well as the lever that is responsible to raise or lower the chair seat. I'm not sure if this is a loan unit and this has already degraded, but what I have been experiencing so far is having a lot of difficulty in trying to use this lever to tilt the backrest as well as trying to raise or lower the seat. The tilting lever is not very seamless. I think it's because of the steps that the backrest can be tilted to so in a few occasions, the lever got stuck midpoint and I'm not able to bring the lever back to its original position. So once the lever is stuck, I'm not sure whether the backrest is fixed to that tilting angle or not. So I was afraid if I were to just put my weight against it, I might topple or the chair might snap back to the upright position. I'm not sure. The other thing I notice is that whenever you pull the lever up, it brushes against the pea leather material of the seat. I'm sure after multiple pulls, that area of the pea leather will get worn out very, very easily. The other miss is the seat lever. This is one of the hardest lever to pull or raise or lower the seat. I had to angle my arms at a very awkward angle to ensure that the lever works. For me, this isn't a good design and it might be a deal breaker to some. But for the most part, the chair is good, especially the comfort level. It has become one of the most comfortable chairs I have sat on. There is no question on its durability and how comfy it makes you feel. But because the material is pea leather and not fabric, I'm not very inclined to use this as my daily drivers. Uh, I live in Singapore and we have hot and humid weather all year round. So my preference is still fabric or mesh. So that's it for my thoughts. Uh, if you can overlook the strange mechanism to tilt, raise or lower the chair and be very happy at how the comfort level is, I think this is worth looking at. All right, guys, that's it for the video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification button to be notified whenever I upload new videos. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.